controversies last session was that somebody floated an idea that there should not ever be these kinds of databases. They should just be flat out logged. Uh, I want to get a sense of, is there anybody in the room who thinks that gang or other types of law enforcement intelligence databases, by anybody in the room, I mean anybody at the table, ought to be flat out there, that they just should not exist. I'm not seeing anybody who wants to take that position. And I can't see real well out of one eye. Okay, yeah, that was one I just wanted to make sure that we we didn't go down that road. Or if we did, it would shape what we were going to talk about. Okay. So, so, with that, Mr. Support. Thank you, Mr. Gunner. David Quay. Um, maybe before we move on, a uh, suggestion uh, to the group and see how they feel about it. Um, there'll be a number of presentations on proposals, and I think maybe in the interest of getting through this, allow everyone to do their proposal and clarify what they're meaning, uh, but not spend time today, we've got other time scheduled, in debating the merit of, or should we, shouldn't we, and, and so forth. But that, that's on the future agenda, but just to make sure that members are comfortable with what is being put forth and what the intent is or, or, or what the specifics are, and then leave the, the merits and, and the validity of it for, for another discussion. I'm wondering if that's a consideration the group would uh, like to take. Otherwise, we may never get through the first proposal today. And I, I think that's a real good suggestion, David. Thank you. Is sure. there a way at the end, <coughs> excuse me, of the presentations to have some time? Because my, my personal concern is that for the next meeting, we might run out of time if we don't begin to have some of these discussions if there's time on today's agenda. Oh, you know if there's time, I'll just say probably. Um, are, we, are we at the point now where we're actually going to make a proposal as to where we should be going? I mean, I feel like there should be more discussion. I, I almost like to frame what is it we're trying to, I mean, you put a point out right now, there's been so much discussion about databases and auditing and, you know, what, what are the real concerns? I think we should kind of narrow it down and say, okay, these are the three things, these are the five things that we want to make changes on or discussion on. Because right now, I don't think I'm ready for a proposal in terms of how this new law should, should go forward. Um, I don't know. Am I alone in that? Go ahead. Actually, I, I, I had the same concern. And I was going to start by kind of drawing on the board how I see the framework. Okay, that would be great. <laughs> how we can approach this. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, you asked about the... Uh, the, uh, the gang sign that's like this, and I'm. Well, actually, actually anybody who sees you do that, I will assume it has something this. to do with your cataract surgery. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. Spock does it better than I ever could. Um, as I was listening to the discussion before, I, the, I, I scribbled down a framework, and, I, and this is the way it works in my mind, and it may or may not work in yours. Um, but I do see a very central question. It's not very visible, is it?
Mike Bosacker was here talking about MinJack. Uh, the law could be changed so that uh, Chief Goldstein's department could open a, uh, an intelligence file on an individual that they believe may be uh, committing, maybe planning on committing a crime. So call that a local intel file. Um, there's also the question about data coming in from other states and going into some of these files. So there's the question about traveling data. And when I gave my presentation at our last meeting, I talked about the Iowa intelligence file that could come into Minnesota law enforcement. How do we handle that? If it's confidential in Iowa, what does data practices law allow in Minnesota? Um, and there's kind of a fun one, and, and, and this is, uh, it's in your materials. We heard from the St. Paul police about LPR, license plate reader. And while I really do want to address a lot of uh, our discussion about what I see as the core issue, I think this is kind of a fun one, and it might be low-hanging fruit for us, as Jim uh, said, he's kind of interested in finding something we could all agree on. Um, and, and the St. Paul police talked to us about license plate reader. And they said, you know, it's this gizmo on top of the squad car. And I talked with uh, uh, Jeff Rubel from Minneapolis Police Department. He said, we're bolting them onto bridges. So that as the vehicles are coming underneath, we're gathering images of license plates, converting them to digital data, comparing them to wanted vehicles, stolen vehicles, that sort of thing gathering information about individuals who might commit crimes. In this case, it's gathering information about, uh, information about motor vehicles that may be driven by people who are possibly going to commit a crime. And here's the part that bugged me. They said, it's public data. Anybody can grab it for 14 days. And then we, you know, if something comes up in two weeks, we have the information about that vehicle is on, under that bridge at that time. And what concerned me about them that when I heard that that information was public, and this is going to make your brains explode because I'm going to argue for a heightened level of uh, uh, data protection. I, I don't think that license plate reader gathered data should be public because any one of us could open a data harvesting business, go to law enforcement <coughs> agencies that gather those license plates. It's not just the plate. It's northbound on Highway 35W, underneath the 46th Street Bridge, at 8.02 a.m. It reveals more than that moment in time. As the data harvester goes to law enforcement and grabs volumes of that data, keep in mind they might not be me, it could be somebody in the Czech Republic or the Virgin Islands or uh, somewhere in Russia, but anywhere in the world that's connected to the internet, i.e. the whole world, can grab that data, and make it available for a $6.95 charge to your credit card to punch in the license number and find out that between 8.02 and 8.17 a.m., Bob Sikora is always in the northbound lane of Highway 35W going by the 46th Street Bridge. Somebody wanting to burglarize my house, see my car in front of my house, look at the license number, go to the data harvester's website, punch in my license number, my vehicle plate number, see my pattern of always being on that spot of the highway at any given time on a weekday morning, and know that that would be a good time to burglarize my house. There's some scary scenarios where a stalker or ex-boyfriend or random goofball could do that to um, call up the license plate number of somebody that they know that they want to harass or stalk. So when I asked the folks who are in charge of the license plate uh, reader program, why is it public, they said, well, because we have no expectation of privacy at any point that we are out in the public, which is completely true. But what the database of license plates and license plate locations and times reveals is not just the moment of time, it reveals my pattern. And by revealing my pattern to a stalker or a burglar, it takes, in a perverse kind of way, it takes 
information gathered by peace officers and makes it available for uh, possible violations of the law. So that's why I offer that as kind of a, um, I'm hoping it's sort of a low-hanging fruit that when we start making decisions, we can talk about license plate reader. It would, in my mind, be a lot safer for people if law enforcement did what the uh, folks who do the min pass uh, have done. And they, before they implemented min pass, which is the little medallion that sits in the corner of your windshield, and when you go under it, a charge is made for being able to travel in the HOV lane on 394. When the Department of Transportation decided they were going to collect that information, which creates the same set of risks as I've just described LPR has, they went to the legislature and they got that information classified as private so that it's available to the collector of the data and it's available to the data subject, but it's not publicly available. So my first request for you is that we um, uh, talk about license plate reader uh, data and recommend that when government collects that information about an individual, they keep it private. So how would you like to proceed? Do you want to 